Hello everyone, this is Jeremy Malfay. I am with Fundamental Tennis. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the forehand and backhand volley footwork. The footwork is incredibly important on the volley and most people do not have it right, not even close. This is how most people volley. So hopefully you've got a split step. Now, your first step to the ball, when you see it's a forehand volley, for example, should not be, I'm a righty, should not be the left foot. Okay, this is very uh, traditional. I see players do this all the time. Many coaches are coaching this, uh, mainly to beginners. Now, check this out. Once again, we don't want to step with the opposite foot first. So, again, many players are taught, many players think you're supposed to step with the left foot um, for a righty on the forehand volley, which is not wrong. But first of all, it's not always the case. It's, can be the other foot as well, that's for a whole other video, but that's just not the whole story. It's not just the left foot. What is the first step actually before that left foot? Again, I'm already talking about the foreign volley, this example. The first step is actually the other foot. So my right leg should go out and hopefully forward, and then I'm gonna push off that right leg and step with the left foot, which is what many players do. They do step with the left, but again, they don't use that load step first. One more time, the first step is an out step. It goes out and forward, and then you're gonna push off that foot in order, and then use that, that left leg as a righty on the forehand volley to step forward. So it's right leg, left leg. I call it a two-step volley. Now why should we load, why should we take this out step as the first step, as opposed to the first step being this left leg and only that left leg, why should there be a load step first? Well, the reason being is it's gonna help you with your balance. It's gonna help you with your alignment with the ball. So for example, when the ball comes, if I just go like this, I'm probably going to be reaching, I'm gonna be off balance, I'm gonna be going in the opposite direction or the wrong direction where I'm trying to go. I wanna get my momentum forward going wherever my target is. So the low step helps you to, with your space, your spacing at contact, it helps you with the alignment. It helps you get your body going forward as opposed to laterally, because if I use my left leg only and I don't use the out step first, oftentimes you're gonna be seeing people volley like this. So their momentum's going the wrong way and that out step again allows you to get behind the ball and if you're behind the ball so to speak um, you can get your momentum going forward as opposed to laterally you're not going to be getting much power that way so the right leg the main purpose for this first step is the load step to so push off that right leg again example is the foreign ball is already push off the right leg and then you do that typical left leg step okay so now the other reason you want to use that out step, which uh, just think of it, the out step should be used with the leg that is closest to the eventual contact point. Um, again, I talked about it improves balance, it creates power because you're pushing off that leg um, into the shot as opposed to just doing this where there's no push off. You're not going to get, you're not going to get much push off if at all if you just do this. Okay, so that right leg, load, push. Now, Maybe the most important thing of why you want to use this um, out step or load step before you do your traditional um, other, other leg step is it will allow you to do less with your upper body. We've all been told don't swing, don't swing, or keep the motion compact. If you don't use your legs, and if you're just taking this one step, all right, that's not using your legs to me because you're really, you're really just kind of walking. See it? If, I, if I'm just walking, when I hit a volley, I'm not gonna get anything from my lower body. I've gotta really push off the ground. That's what that out step is for. So when you use your legs, you get power from the lower body, of course, and this allows you to keep the upper body quiet. So you don't have to do this to get power because your power comes from your legs instead of the swing. So you actually not, you don't just get more power when you use that low step. You also get more control because using the legs is where you get the power and then you will intuitively know to not do too much swing because you already have power from the lower body. 
So the lower body gives you the power, again, with that out step, that load step, that step where you push off the ground. And the upper body is able to stay quiet and still. You don't have to swing because now you can actually get controlled power. If you don't use your legs, then you're going to swing because that's the only way to get power if you're not using your legs. Not that power is everything. Okay, so very important. You get that load step for balance, for alignment, um, uh, spacing, and to help you with your uh, getting more power, pushing off the ground as opposed to just doing this um, very traditional, lame, one-step footwork. So we want the volley to be two steps whenever possible. Again, if it's a bullet, then you're gonna have sometimes no footwork, or you might do one step to the side. That's a whole different video. But again, a majority of volleys, they should be at least two steps, okay? Anything that's not coming fast to you should be a two-step volley. And hopefully I've convinced you of that with all these reasons. Uh, in summary, it's gonna help you with power it's gonna help you with controls, no doubt about it. So a visual that I think is pretty good I use with my players is you wanna push off the ground with that outside leg, just like you would kind of when you're rollerblading or ice skating, you're pushing off the ground or you're pushing off of the ice. Um, you're, not, you're not just standing there taking one lousy step. You're, you're pushing off the ground, you're being athletic and you are really, you're really just getting your, your as much weight of your body into that ball and towards the target by doing so. Now if we go back to how I talked about using the legs and pushing off the ground, using that out step as opposed to just the one step with the opposite foot and how that creates a lot of power which allows you to keep the upper body still. And why is that important? Well, the more you move your racket, the more it lengthen your swing the harder it is to control the ball, because the harder it is to time that. Okay, so, you know what, and when I think about it, I've never seen a player use their legs well, move to the ball versus doing the one-step footwork. I've never seen a player have good footwork at the net and swing. It just doesn't happen, because once again, when you use the legs, you get power from the legs. And then the swing is not necessary at all, because all you gotta do Maybe move the racket one feet, two feet, three feet. That's all that is needed for most volleys if you use your legs. Once again, if you don't use your legs, then you are going to be swinging, and then it's going to be very hard to control the ball because if you swing, it's hard to control the ball versus if you're just doing a nice compact motion. You can tell yourself all you want, don't swing, don't swing, don't swing. However, it's inevitable that you are going to swing if you don't use your legs, if you don't push off the ground, if you don't have efficient footwork. And of course, we don't want to swing because the more length there is in our racket path, or in other words, the more swing we have, the more difficult it is to control the ball because then the timing of the contact point becomes uh, quite challenging. The second topic I want to talk about regarding the volley footwork is another huge fundamental. This is an absolute must. And first let me tell you the very common mistake I see, and then I'll tell you the fix or the fundamental that I was talking about. Now, I'm going to use the backhand volley in this example. Now let's say that we correctly do our out step, our load step for power and control. Now, what is the timing of the contact in relation to when your opposite foot lands on the ground. Well, here's what most players do. They make contact as their foot hits the ground. Once again, they make contact as their foot is landing on the ground. Now this is a problem because your body momentum, your racket, and your posture is going to go down. Why? Because your landing as you're hitting, okay? So what we don't wanna do, again, is make contact as you're landing that foot on the ground because you're gonna lose balance, you're gonna lose posture, your momentum's gonna be going downwards, and the reason that's a problem is because it's gonna make the racket do that as well, okay? So it's important that, what is, what is the timing and the relationship of the contact and landing the step? It's actually, you want to make contact before you land your step, okay? So I like to think about loading the step. Let me back up here. I like to think about loading the step and then lunging. You're going to make contact kind of in 
when you're off the ground really in many situations, you're gonna make contact in the middle of that lunge. So you're gonna make contact, if you watch in slow motion as you probably see here, you're gonna make contact well before you land that foot on the ground. That's gonna help you to create power. It's gonna help you with balance. It's gonna help you control the racket. Again, it will allow you to not uh, bring your body and your racket and your momentum downwards to the ground had you instead done it incorrectly and landed that foot when you make contact. Okay, so it's a lot of uh, similar benefits to making contact before landing the foot as, as there is in the previous footwork discussion towards the beginning of this video I talked about. So it's gonna help you with power, it's gonna help you with control. Now the reason you wanna make contact prior to landing the step again is, is it's going to give you uh, the most amount of your body weight into that shot as opposed to if you land as you hit or you land before you make before you hit, then uh, all of that energy you created from that outstep, from pushing off the ground, has greatly, di dis greatly dissipated. If you land your foot on the ground as you make contact, once again, you wanna make contact and then land to give you the most power and control possible. Now, it's funny, when I, when I, when I get into the mind of, of rec players, I realize they, they look at advanced volleyers and they think to themselves, how do they get so much power by just doing this? By, I mean, they're not even swinging. I mean, it, it looks like they're just barely moving the racket and the ball goes like a bullet. It's because they know how to use their legs. They use the load and the timing of their contact in relation to when their other foot lands on the ground. That's huge. That's gonna make, that's gonna make uh, just like any advanced player, any really high level player, it's gonna make, it's gonna make it when people look at you, they're gonna say, man, that guy, that gal makes it look so easy. It's technique, it's timing, it's using the lower body. All right guys, so don't be a part of the 99% of players who just simply step with their opposite foot. You need to take that out step, you need to push off that leg and make contact before you land with that other foot. Now, that's uh, again gonna help you, both of those things We're gonna help you greatly with your power, and your control. Now, I have a free serve training series in which it's gonna help you tremendously with the accuracy of your toss. I also have a section that's going to help you create a lot of spin on your kick serve, or if you're thinking, I don't have a kick serve, it's gonna help you learn how to do a kick serve. And then also, I'm really gonna help you to, uh, actually the number one power killer on your serve, that, that secret is going to be revealed in my free serve course as well. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, if you're interested in this free course, then just scroll down a bit below into the description and you're gonna see something titled something like a free serve course. That is it, click that link and then, um, then you'll be on your way to watching that, uh, what I think is really good content. So thank you so much. I look forward to hearing from you. Leave a comment. Make sure to subscribe, please. Give me a like and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. I look forward to seeing you in next week's video. Dis <laughs> dissipated. <laughs> there we go. I couldn't remember that English word for some reason. I don't know why. That was... That, that word sounded like it could be an actual word, so... It wasn't like a really bad, uh, I don't know, dissipated. Sorry guys, dissipated, 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 greatly dissipated.